Lenny Alperti here. We're taking a break from the shadow carpet today. So we are in front of my coffee table today. And as you can see, there's uh, some guns on the, on the counter and uh, a whole bunch of belts. Well, today we're going to be going over inside the waistband belt systems. And I want to preface this video by, by saying that what equipment you gather here, specifically for inside the waistband carry, will be largely and heavily dependent on you, your position of carry, and what you intend to do with the equipment. So you see here, there are generally two different examples I have. I have leather and I have um, synthetic nylon uh, webbing here, or uh, quick detach belts. These are the blue alpha gear EDC hybrid belts that I've uh, alluded to in the previous video, or that were featured in the previous video. You know, leather can be worn every day, but this is really, for me, it's more of a, a professional attire or semi-formal attire where I can't carry um, a gun in my normal appendix inner waistband carrier like I normally do. Now, you're probably wondering why the hell there's a uh, blue tape here. Well, um, this is to simulate belt loops so that when I apply the holsters on later to show you that we can sort of visualize uh, where the belt loops are. And that'll kind of give you an understanding on why I do things the way I do for, for at least these systems here. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and get started. Now, uh, as I stated earlier, your position of carry or where you intend to carry on your body is very, very important. And it will greatly determine what type of equipment, what type of belt, what type of holsters that you get, as well as even your clothing and attire. Uh, some folks don't find inner, inside the waistband very comfortable, so they carry outside the waistband. So I don't have any Kydex ones to show you. I do have them, but they're in my, uh, in my vehicle right now for training purposes or I have to use them later but this is one example this is a leather uh, pancake style holster uh, made by Bianchi Bianchi and Safari Land are the same company essentially and you see there's uh, different belt loops here for for you to adjust the cant on it uh, this one is actually designed for my my Ruger SP 101 3 inch see it's all polished right now you can kind of see my reflection in it but still got a little bit of work to do but that's okay here so it snaps right in. Why I carry this? Well, it's probably like a hiking gun, really. I mean, uh, the three inch barrel on a revolver is a little bit long for a CCW, but it can be done. But besides the fact, this, this video is about belts, not necessarily about holsters, but the holsters do tie into it. So you would loop this belt essentially through the belt loops here, and it would go over the holster and then back down here and then through there this would be generally carried around the three o'clock position or 4 30 if you like that style um really more for a more formal environment where i'm restricted or, or i can't necessarily carry in uh, a penix carry okay so these two belts here they're made by acre and they are leather reinforced belts they have a, a strip of polymer inside that reinforces the belt and it's very stiff now, the, the pro to stiff belt is very supportive when you carry heavy guns, especially, uh, you know, these type of belts were from the era where uh, metal guns were around and clock or polymer guns themselves weren't exactly very popular. So people carried around uh, Beretta's uh, Six Hours or the metal frame Smith & Wesson's. And they needed the, the heavier support, the rigid system. And these are great for that. But the downsides to is they, they're stiff, so they retain the shape. And they kind of bow out your clothing. So you always kind of see this bulge. They're not as, you know, the, the pro to the flexible belts is they mold to your body a little bit more. And after a while, these, these will eventually start to curve to conform to your body, which is what belts are supposed to do. So it's, it is a little bit more antiquated, but it is designed to be um, quasi-formal and um, for you to wear on uh, occasions where your normal position of carry is uh, sort of prohibited. Or, you know, for folks who, who uh, have to wear business casual regularly this is an, uh, one option that they go with here okay so because i carry appendix inside the waistband um i tend to offset my belt over so let's imagine these two are the front belt loops and the center buttons would be right here i carry my buckle not in the center but offset to the side the reason why i do that is because i don't want i want to limit the amount of bulk up here as, as much as possible because although some people do carry with the, the buckle up front and they put the two holster loops here sometimes depending on the pants that you wear it's restrictive on the the distance of the belt uh, loops themselves so you if you put your buckle in the center your holsters or the clips on your holsters may not be able to engage 
or won't have space to engage uh, onto the belt itself. Now, I'm going back, these two, just to be clear, these belts here, they're, uh, I believe these are 1.5, they should be, maybe they're 1.25, but the the belt sizes for, or at least the, the thickness for these are 1.5. Like I do have 1.75s also, but they are, uh, they're abnormal. They're thicker than what most belts. The standard is 1.5 inches. Um, and you know, you should ideally size your belt clips, the clips on your holsters to the belt size that you have. Uh, if you have one, some 1.75 belts, you, you're going to have to make a decision. Either you're going to use a 1.75 belt clips for all your holsters and then just deal with a little bit excess slack when you go 1.5 or you go 1.5 and just use that 1.75 inch belt for something else. Okay. So going back here, let's say we have my. L LAS concealment holster, Ronin L 3.0. And I do use a teardrop because I carry a pin next to the waistband. This flex boom section here, as well as the teardrop is absolutely vital and it is important. Um, Jeff at LAS concealment, he absolutely recommends it. And I believe him, uh, including Filster. Filster is another proponent of uh, appendix inside the waistband carry. And he also believes in the articulation here, as well as having a teardrop system, because what it does is imagine this is your belt line. This teardrop helps to push the holster up. See how it's angling up this way. And then this belt claw or wing, or depending on or which manufacturer's nomenclature you go for, will help to push the holster in this way as the belt comes on. You see how when I'm doing that, the center here starts to articulate and starts to bend. So the non-articulating holster systems like the TRX sidecar and maybe some of the others up there like the last line of defense holster, it will not articulate with it. And instead, as the belt pushes this section over here, that means that this magazine side will ride up as well. So these two are always fighting each other in those systems. So there are a few manufacturers that use this type of articulation system. The, the I think it was tier one concealment. There it goes. The, the center folds in independently so that they can move independently and ride. So you think about the way the human body works, different parts of your body, they're gonna do different things as you're doing it. So that's why these are my preference here as far as AIWB. Uh, I have also tried the non-mag caddy versions. I don't like them. I have found that, let's say from a center position, and let's imagine that there was no mag caddy. Um, the holsters tend to shift more towards my one o'clock position just because it's fighting against the, the button of your pants in the center. While on the mag caddy system like this, you have two different clips to hold it in place. So the pants button stays in the center here and it doesn't force your holster to go otherwise because you have multiple different points of contact. Okay, so coming back here, we're going to put the holster onto the belt line. As you can see, that they are in front of or inside or in between the belt loops. So depending on your pants, right, you're gonna have to pick your pants or your attire appropriately to make sure you have the proper thickness of the of the belt loops to insert your belt itself, but also to have the appropriate belt size for your belt clips. So from this position, as you can see, the belt's pushing in and now the holster itself and the mag caddy are articulating with your body. So if you move around, let's say you move your left leg to throw like a high kick or whatever you gotta do, roundhouse kick, whatever the Street Fighter does. Now this is moving while this portion stays in. And at the same time, this teardrop back here is pushing up on the gun and hiding the hot spot, which is the usually the uh, the slide or the rear sights of, the, of your gun. Now you can start to see why I articulate or I move my buckle system closer to my one o'clock. It is simply to prevent the excess bulk that would be here. So you think about it, it's your, it's your pants, your button, which uh, already is excess material and it pops up. It's pushing this section here. And on top of that, you have your metal buckle, which is adding bulk to it. And I'll, I'll show you what that looks like. So as I alluded to earlier, if you go with this route, you may not have appropriate spacing with your pants to get over the buckle and the loops themselves. You can see how much more space this takes up. Yeah, you can easily QD here, but your holster is still retained. So what is it doing for you? You can't remove your pants uh, in, in case of emergency as I alluded to in the previous video. You can't do that while in the, I mean, you'd have to pop up your holster regardless. And you have to do that with the other system also. But it's, it is a little bit more cumbersome because you're having to fight against the buckle and the fact that this section of the belt is a little bit more uh, flaccid. It's not as stiff as the 
the more supported sections of the belt. That's why I don't like to to uh, have my buckle in the center. I like to have it more offset. So we're gonna try here. This is my uh, Glock 43X with a Streamlight TLR6, I think it is, and Trijicon HD sights. Let's check the lumen rating on that since we're here for the TLR6. Not bad, it's a 100 lumen gun. What do you expect from such a small trigger guard style like, like this? Okay, so in you go. I do have a spare magazine. But note that because I'm expecting the Shield Arms magazines to come in, this Mag Caddy is designed for the Shield Arms magazine and does not fit the factory OEM magazines itself. So I'm waiting for that to come in before I start to introduce this gun to my carry rotation because I want to test the 43X and the Shield Arms magazines together. But for now, we can mock it. You see, it's nice and stiff right there. Well, it doesn't want to go in. We're just going to assume that this, this is in there. And as you can see, your entire belt line is like this. Okay, so moving on from the single stack guns, I'm going to put this gray one to the side. This is actually a uh, an original Blue Alpha Gear belt back from their Kickstarter days when they were all still working out of one of the co-owner's garages, essentially making gear. So I remember I was an early adopter and the buckles themselves have certainly evolved throughout the years. And it's simply, uh, that's not to the fault of Blue Alpha Gear. It's, it's actually the Cobra buckle manufacturer, which is... Austria Alpine. Moving on to the green one, you know, I've, I've had the gray belt for a number of years and I've expanded a little more since then. So the belt is actually the green one's one size up. You see it's, it is size 34 and the gray one is a size 32. And although I could have stayed with this belt, I'm sort of at the end of the adjustment here. Here. I mean, I've still got about an inch or so looks like of material that can add on but then you start to kind of run out right and he, this section will stick up a little bit more and it gets caught in more stuff so i figured i may as well just get a bigger uh belt to give myself a little more expansion uh depending on if i go for an even bigger gun so currently my primary carry this is my clock 19 with my las concealment ronin l for light 3.0 holster as well it's the same thing as the the one for the 43x just in just for the Glock 19 and in girly prints, actually. So I thought it was funny. This was the first tester holster that I ordered from them. And I thought it would be fun to have it uh, in girly print and Tiffany blue and all that funky stuff because it's a Glock, right? Glocks are supposed to be silly. They're not supposed to make any sense. So, okay. Glock 19. Function clear. This is a Glock 19 Gen 4. Looks like Streamlight TLR7. Trijicon RMR Type 2. Uh, these are the Ameriglow 429s, I want to say. Agency Arms Barrel, yes, Agency Arms, Agency Arms Trigger, and SLR Magazine Well, Vickers Tango Down Magazine Release Button Extended. See how it sort of is a little hump there to make it, makes it a little bit easier to hit from the rear side instead of having to hit towards the front bias of the gun. Uh, Agency Arms Trigger. So it's not bad. It's nice, nice little clean, clean, crisp break on there. Let's try the lumens on that. That's the TLR7. And... See if we can get the, the dot to show. There's the dot. And it sort of washes out on the camera here, but I can see with my naked eye. But beyond that, okay, so same thing. I'm gonna insert to the holster. And from here, pop the gun in. Same exact situation as the single stack. The gun will curve, articulate, all that fun stuff. And now we have our teardrop again. So you see this one's a little bit more well used. This is, uh, I've carried this one a lot more than the other guns for sure. All right, I'm gonna go to the third holster. It's pretty much the same thing. Except I'm just simply showing you the options that you can do with the uh, with a single belt. Now you can certainly use these for the leather belts earlier, but if you're likely going to be wearing a leather belt, it's going to be for a dress. And although Blue Alpha Gear does advertise on their website, they they uh, they have an example of somebody wearing a suit with these, and it does look it does look pretty clean, but it's just not traditional as far as wearing a suit and tie. Now you can certainly do it. It's a free ass country. You can do what you want. But I personally, I would wear a leather belt. So. Next up, my Glock 17. Just want to show clear. Standard magazine. Uh, no extensions on this one. These are my range magazines right now. I do have other ex magazines with the uh, 
shield arms magazine extensions as well. Um, okay, so this is the you've probably seen this this clock seventeen before. It is my uh, my tester. I use it to test optics and and other products. This is the Holosen or the primary arms and Holosen Collaborative HS five hundred seven C with ACSS Vulcan reticle, and it has the the you see the the giant ring right there and the chevron in the center. Well, that's designed for you to, when you're off aim, it tells you to basically go down and then you can find the dot from there or whatever direction that you're off, right? And uh, I have a follow-up video coming on this, but you know, like like the genius that I am, the last time I was at the range, I forgot to film footage. So I'll have to go back out there and do it. Uh, let's see, going in respect to this, because I know people are gonna ask. This is a Surefire X300. A model because it has the it has the quick detach section on there, or at least for Glocks. There it goes. It's nice and on. Agency Arms Trigger. This is a Rainier Arms extended and ambidextrous magazine release button here. Uh, S3F barrel Holosun. I mentioned before again, uh, Ameriglow 429. Backup sites. Now I I have tested these and they work and they are uh, they do coat witness pretty well with it. I mean I can hit with iron steel too. Just turn off the red dot and go for it. Uh, but you know the red dot certainly is a lot more friendly to to shoot them to play with now. Uh, the slide is made by Zev and uh, if you've seen my previous post before discussing the different types of optic cut slides and the preferences behind them. Follow that. Follow along with that and I'll create a video on that down the line too. All right so. I guess this is a, a quasi review on the LS concealment holsters also. And it locks in. So the LS concealment holster, this is granted it's made for the Glock 17, but it also fits Glock 19, Glock 34, because it is an open face. Just, you know, do what you got to do. But I do carry for my compact guns, I like to have compact lights. That's why the uh, Streamlight TLR7 is on there. And while this is a full-size gun, I prefer to carry a full-size gun on full-size light. So realistically, it is going to be the Summer Carriage 43X. Then uh, spring and fall carry, depending on what's going on. I carry the 19 whenever, and the, the 17 is definitely a winter gun. It's definitely when I'm wearing a bigger jacket. Okay, so going back to the Blue Alpha Gear EDC hybrid belt, uh, as alluded to in the, the prior video, this is a uh, one size up, one size down adjustable because Blue Alpha Gear did accommodate for uh, people's expansions, clothing, attire, or even the carrying of different guns. So as noted, this is a size 34. And as you can see, how much Velcro room, uh, how much adjustment I have available here. So I can go up size 36, may maybe even more. If I move this all the way down here, I mean, that's, you think that's a good amount of difference right there that you can adjust. Or I can tighten this to as far as this section and also a very good amount of adjustment. So, you know, they advertise this one size up, one size down. It seems like you can do a lot more. And then, you know, because it is a nylon going through the cover buckle system, it is uh, infinitely adjustable. Uh, well, within within reason, you know, up until the point where you tighten yourself up a little bit too much. Now the core buckle system here, as noted previously, it is vital in your ability to quick detach because quick detach is important, especially when you need to use restroom and you really gotta go. My usual routine, if I gotta go, is essentially. When I get to my destination, unhook the, the loops, pop that out, set it to the side and your hammock or what do you got to do from this point, unbuckle and you just pull these right through the belt loops and just pull it right through. And to show you that, I've grabbed a pair of my pants. So here it is, a pair of 511 jeans. I know, cringe. Um, you know, uh, 511, the, their pants and their jeans, they're, they're pretty good. They're pretty good. It, it provides ample space. It's pretty comfortable. They're stretchy. Uh, I think the the Vertex ones might be a little bit better in design, but I'm used to these and they're super cheap through industry discount. So the Vertex pricing, it's not as good as the 511 pricing for as far as pants goes. Or realistically, it's the cut. Like, uh, you know, I'm, I'm not too much of a thick boy. So for me, I can't wear pants that are a little bit, uh, they're a little too bad. So the way I do it is I, uh, I come through, I tend to skip the first loop here. So you see here, here's the uh, the button itself. I skip the first loop uh, and I start routing through the outside. Now, since we are here, 
as you can see, this is the release point. Uh, and essentially what I want to do is I have this primary section here, the, the uh, female end, loop through the front completely while the buckle's on the side. So let's imagine that I'm wearing these and your view, your view is from here. The buckle is on this section. The belt itself is sitting at the center. And here is my the, the button for the pants. Now, as I mentioned to you before, the non-Mad Caddy versions, let's say it's just a single point here. Usually they come with two clips or one giant clip. Um, if you use that system, you clip on just one side. What happens is you cannot push it further than where the excess slack is on your button area. As you can see, I'm trying to push it, but it won't go through just simply because this button's interfering. So because of that, it has a natural tendency for the excess material to push your holster over this way. And that forces your gun closer to your, in this case, my right leg, and it causes it to be a lot more uncomfortable over time. Uh, and now in the, the contrast, the Mad Caddy system, some of the dual clip system is that it provides a little bit more support for you versus a single point of weight that's, that's uh, weighing you down. So as you can see, now that the two clips are on, the button is in the center, but it's not forcing the holster to move towards my right leg because the counter the counterweight or the counterbalance is here on this side. So yeah, so that's it for that, uh, for this section. Now, the live example, if I decide to use the restroom, take the holster out, unbuckle the Cobra, pull through, there you go. You know, unzip your pants and do your thing. Drop them. Throw your gun in the old banana hammock there. Do your business. So since we've already started talking about inside the waistband holsters, which in this case, these are all my LAS concealment holsters. Let's try to get them all in the same frame. My LAS concealment holsters. Remember the magazine here doesn't really fit. I'm waiting for the shield arms mags. Sometimes, I mean, we, uh, it looks like we have a little bit of time, so we're just going to go ahead and, and uh, segue over to outside the waistband for, for the duty belts. Now, there are also pancake style or kydex style outside the waistband holsters that are similar to this that sit on the outside at your 3 o'clock position. The pancakes are quite comfortable, but uh, the, the kydex ones, are they're form-fitted. And uh, one of the downsides to the form fit holsters, as well as the inside the waistband holsters, is if you make any modification to your gun, add a light, um, add an optic, it may not fit anymore. So you have to buy new holsters, right? So figure out the final evolution of your firearm that you plan on doing, and then gear your holsters around that. The downside to the form fitted ones is unless it has those specific attachments, like the in this case, all my um, all my LAS concealment holsters are light bearing. They lock onto the light. It requires the light to be there. You know, the, the holster will be loose without the light on. Like, for example, if I show you, take the light off on the 17. See, it's loose. It wants to come out because it relies on the light to lock. However, on outside the waistband systems, like the, that are non-molded, like the Safari Land, this is specifically the 6354DO. This is with the light currently. Insert and it locks. It locks from there. Deactivate the ALS system. Pull. And I'll go over that in a second. And it works. Remove the light. Do the same thing. Insert. And it locks. Oh, there it goes. Insert it into locks. And draw out, and it releases. Because the Safari Land systems themselves, the ALS, which is this uh, lever here, I don't know if you can see this through the sliding. There he goes. It articulates that little piece, which locks onto the ejection port side here. So as you rock the lever on the ALS, it forces the the uh, the mechanism to open up this way and that frees up the gun to come out. So because of this, it is not dependent on the light. So this Safari Land light bearing holsters, in this case also an RDS, will fit all variations of that gun without even without a light and without an RDS. 
if you intend to do any of these uh, modifications to the gun as the end game, just go ahead and save your money and get the final form of this style holster. Now, you're, as with the molded style holsters, that's the downside to it. If you get a molded Kydex, it's more comfortable, but it also sits higher. And once you make modifications to your gun, it's not as uh, good. Now, as alluded to, as we get into these Fireland systems, we're just going to go over some of their nomenclature here. These are specifically the 6354DO. DO is uh, like DO as in David Ocean. It is, um, DO was intended for the doctor optic. That's, that's a very old, old design. Start especially for these holsters, these are older designs here. This is, they, they do have their standard 6000 series. There's non cordura wrapped like this. And it's, uh, you'll see like police officers wear them and they'll usually be in basket weave or standard or even pleather, what, but whatever Safari Land calls theirs. It's basically it's pleather. And um, it, their new RDS holsters tend to have a hood on. I don't have an example. I just sold that holster, uh, but it, it has a hood that articulates like this. I, I'm not a big fan of that. I understand the purpose of it. I actually prefer the open top like this. I don't want anything to potentially bind as I'm drawing them. Now, this is their GLS holster. It's their general fit. It fits multiple different guns and allows you to adjust via the set screw. Uh, I have this because I have an MMP 22 compact. It's a little 22 rimfire pistol that uh, I use to train other folks uh, who are getting or who are new to firearms or, and they just, they're a little bit more sound or recoil sensitive. So we give them a little uh, 22 for them to get acclimated and gradually bring them up to, uh, up to speed with center fire rounds. Okay. Now, these holsters come in different retention levels. Uh, but before that, I'll note that these are both the QLS attachments here. These are the male ends. Uh, the female ends are on the belt line. The UBL shrouds on attached to the belts themselves. This allows a quick detach method. And it basically forks in. And you can release these two levers by squeezing in and, and pulling out the holsters. The reason why I do this is because I use different guns. Right, I, uh, and different styles of holsters, different colors, and uh, I, I need to swap stuff around depending on what I'm wearing for that day or what I'm doing. So you can certainly wear these for concealment, but you can see they're really bulky, really bulky and um, probably not ideal for you to do that. Okay, so this is a level one active retention called the ALS. You'll see the SLS hood also. Uh, ALS stands for Automatic Locking System. SLS is uh, Self Locking System, I want to say. It is a hood that comes forward and you push the lock back. I don't like that um, system because it requires you to push down and forward and then back to deactivate the ALS. Um, I don't like that. Instead, if you needed that level 2 tier of retention, then I, I would recommend uh, the ALS Guard. Uh, which is an attachment that comes over here. I'll, I'll show you that in a second. But before that, you also see the third tier of retention, which is a giant hood that comes over here. And what it's intending to do is to prevent people from reaching from the front side. Um, it's kind of, it looks like a weird little floppy piece of like leftover holster that somebody forgot to remove. And it's, it's nobody uses it. Everybody takes it off. Re realistically, the folks who are using level three retention now, is by department mandate or their job requires it. Realistically, um, you can you can certainly train to be fast with it, but but ideally for for more for civilians, even folks in the professional world that don't have agency requirements, they simply just go the ALS system here. Now there this is called the Nub Mod by OT Defense. That's Oregon Trail Defense, and essentially it is a an attachment that goes over the ALS. It clips right on or at least this specific example, they have different versions that require glue or modifications to your holster uh, uh, to the ALS system because Safari Land has changed that around quite a bit. But they, they've, done, they've done their best to adapt. Uh, Micah, Micah is one of the owners there, or the owner, and a super cool guy, super cool guy. So essentially it is a two-piece system that locks over your ALS and it just gives you a much larger surface area to actuate the ALS and draw your gun from there, right? So I'm gonna say Glock 17 much, much larger surface area and draw. So because this is size for a Glock 17, it will also fit my Glock 19. 
Buck 19, same thing. And the gun is retained. Draw from there, same thing, my black one. Locks in. Draw from there, so. It's a cool thing. One holster, multiple guns. Now the 26, I've never actually tried to throw a 26 in here, or at least a subcompact equivalent of whatever caliber you're using. Uh, but I know that a 34 holster will not fit. The 34 holsters are specifically longer um, just to accommodate. Because you can see here, the light is uh, longer than the muzzle area. On a 34, the muzzle is about the same distance as a full-size light here. It's, it'll probably be about there. Now, I know people do use Glock 34 holsters for their 17 and 19. And I've also noted that uh, from experience, and as well as reports from other folks, that sometimes folks who use the smaller guns and the Glock 34 holster, the Glock 19 physically sits a smidge lower. And what that causes is that this section of the holster, uh, let's actually use this one because it's lighter. This section of the holster, as you're moving around, may compress and push your magazine release button, even if it's not extended and it drops your mag, or at least it bumps it down so you don't know. So when you draw or present your gun, you, you may fire the one shot that's already in the chamber, but the rest of your magazine falls out. Okay, so moving on. Remember I noted that the ALS system has changed over the years? Well, this is a, maybe in late 90s to 2000 era, P228, P229 holster, a six hour P228, T29. You notice here that on the 6354DO, the ALS is actually flat. See how it stops right there? And on the older version, it flares out a lot more. You see this little cut? It's like, it was actually much wider than what it is now. Even though this was basically a really good release system, the ALS Leverick here, they might have reduced it probably because they thought it was too easy for the other side, basically the person trying to take your gun to, to actuate the ALS. I, I thought it was fine because now uh, they essentially has created an aftermarket for folks to need an uh, the ALS mod, which essentially does the same thing. It widens out the lever and allows you to actuate the ALS a little bit easier. Going back to what I talked about, the ALS guard. Uh, I did post a video previously for uh, another person, another trainer on Instagram to let him know uh, what this system was about. He asked me about it and I, I created a video and post, uh, posted it out there for him. But anyway, so here's your ALS holster uh, or your ALS release lever. The ALS guard is here and it actually acts as an attachment. You just uh, unscrew everything and, and uh, apply this over it and it acts as a guard. It simply covers your ALS holster. So now you can't actuate it until you physically push the ALS guard out of the way and then you actuate the ALS from there and draw, all right? So unlike the SLS, which is pushed down then forward, and then you have to click back to uh, disable the ALS and draw your gun. The ALS guard is a strict, uh, strictly push forward, then back, and then go and then draw from there, right? So it's just one step, but it's more of a natural movement of forward back versus down forward than back, right? It's a little bit faster. Uh, I, I frankly don't like the SLS. I, I've seen examples of it breaking and really it's pretty flimsy. I don't like it. Um, now the Safari Land holsters, the new 6000 series, this is a, an actually a 7TS series. So it's a little bit uh, less expensive for them to make and it's cheaper. So it's nice in the sense that it has uh, very minimal contact in your gun, but it's really noisy because it's just all plastic. Well, the 6000 series, they all have, I don't know if you can see it here, but they all have suede, suede lining on the inside, which is really nice protects your gun, but it does also create a, a passive friction fit on there for your, if your gun was there. So that's that's sort of another um, tier of retention if you consider it that way. Um, anyways, so the the SLS hood I didn't like. The uh, the six six thousand series and the seven thousand series with the RDS hood. I, I I have tested the ALS guard with the RDS holsters and they work. Um, I know that some folks have the SLS hood on top of the uh, RDS, the new 
6000 series with the um, with the articulating hood. I don't like that because um, ha- I've had that before and I've had cases where the SLS has caught onto the hood and prevented the gun from drawing. So I don't like it. It's not as uh, as I didn't like the way it was executed for, for that matter. All right, so we're going to put this to the side. Let's bring back the Swaziland GLS system. So the GLS, instead of a, a thumb brake, it is actually a grip brake. So the moment that you grip the gun, let's imagine the handle is there. As you grip, you're pushing in and deactivating the lever, and you'll be able to draw from there. Now, this is a good holster for very basic, non-hard to use. I don't actually like the grip on it, or at least the release mechanism on it. And it's finicky because it's a general fit holster and that fits multiple different guns so it doesn't actually fit the the gun that i'm using it on as well as it should all right so now we're going to move on um there's really not much else to talk about from the belt line perspective i, I didn't think that i would cover all of this in one video but i did uh the accessories themselves that apply to outside the waistband belts it's going to be up to you on what you want uh realistically if you you know, there, there are several other YouTubers out there that have the information, whether it be the, the HSGI Tacos, the STAC Kiwis, which are my preference are the Kiwis. Um, but, you know, I, I would just have different rigs for different setups. Like if I had a 7.62 rig, I would just have independent 7.62 rigs um, to run those. So it depends on what you want, what you want to do, what your budget is. And if you're actually going to run your kit the way that was intended. Um, I, I've tested a lot of my gear, run around with it to find out what works for me. And this is what works for me and whatever explanation that I can provide to you to hopefully help guide you towards what you need to um, get for yourself. So that's it for the Beltline series. I didn't think I'd get to finish it all in one in two videos, it looks like, uh, but they are longer than usual, longer than the 10 minutes that my videos usually are. Um, I hope that it wasn't boring. I hope the information was helpful. Uh, come back next time and we'll go over the next few topics from there. Watch my Instagram, watch my Facebook, and just to find out uh, contents on what we're going to be talking about down the line. Um, if you have any suggestions or have any questions, feel free to, to send me a message and I'll add that to the list. Right. Feel free to like, comment, subscribe, and for to anyone that you think this could be helpful. And we'll see you next time. Bunny Operator signing out. I know here I am, a random dude on the internet, starting a random gun tuber channel in Instagram just to show y'all how to put on a belt. Good times, huh? 20, 2021, homie. 2021. I, I guess for you guys, it's not a banana, man. Uh, I don't know whatever techniques you got going on, but that's basically how guys do it. We unhook, our pants are down, holster. Holster and gun and gear is right there. Unless like the bathroom has a little like toilet paper holder thing on the side you can put your gun on. But you know, I'd probably rather keep here so it's always within reach. You know, in case um zombies or battle gnomes or whatever type of mysterious creature decides to invade the bathroom stall and attack you. You know, they'll probably try to crawl under the stall. At this point, you can just grab your gun and, and then just pop off from there. Whatever fantasy land that we all live in. I may just edit this and do movie screen magic. Just all of a sudden have our pants and buckles all looped up. <laughs>